I need to figure out where I'm going to be putting the drivers. I want to get them physically close to each other, but without actually touching. I don't like when the, there's no wood around the drivers. So I'm going to leave about 3 sixteenths of an inch in between. And I'm also going to mark the outer circle of the um, faceplate on the wood so that along with the center point, I'll have that as a guide because already I've got, you know, a couple hours put into these baffles. I don't want to screw up here. I'm happy with the layout and I can start routing them out. I'm going to start with the recess on the woofer first and I'm going to be using my handy circle jig here that works with my trim router. Um, handy because it's so um, easy to make one quickly because I just had to make this. <laughs> I couldn't find the um, the other two actually. I had it before and then I remade it again for another video and uh, I'll find it. But in the meantime, it takes about 10 minutes to make one. It's just a block of wood with a pin in it. I've got a three quarter inch straight cutting bit in the router and that's for cutting the recess. I'm going to cut the recess to the correct size, but I want to cut it under size in the first pass. And then I'll readjust my jig here and make another cut. What I don't want to do is make the recess too big. That second pass got it the right size diameter wise, but it wasn't quite deep enough. So I readjusted my router and I just ran it again. And now it is perfect. So before I make any changes, I'm going to do the other one and then I can change it and do the tweeter on both baffles. So I've got both recesses and both baffles cut. And I'm getting ready to change the bit on the router here from the three quarter inch straight cutting bit to this quarter inch uh, spiral cutting bit. <laughs> this is um, what I'm going to use here, mainly because it's the sharpest thing I have. So I get the best results without too much burning. Now, I mean, it's possible to cut this out with the right size hole saw if you have a selection of, of hole saws. I've got some hole saws, but none that are the right size for this. The other possibility is cut it out with a jigsaw, but I want to cut it with the router because I want this to be clean. I want it to be clean on the back too, because this is an open baffle speaker. It should look good on the back. Now this is not going to cut all the way through. What I'm going to have to do after I cut a little bit more than halfway is finish drilling that center hole, the pivot hole in the middle, and then I can flip the baffle over and I can cut the rest of the plug out from the back. I finished cutting out the hole for the first tweeter, but then I discovered a problem. I tried to put the tweeter in and it wouldn't fit in the recess that I cut. It's not big enough. I was being a little bit too careful, I guess. So, in an attempt to fix that, I put the plug back in. And since I used a quarter inch bit to make the cut, I'm using quarter inch dowels stuck in around the plug to hold it in place while I make the new cut. I've got the holes cut for the midwoofer in both panels. And before I move on, I want to open this hole up on the back panel. Uh, this is thick material, two inches thick. And what it's creating at the back is a pipe for the uh, speaker to fit in. And it's really compressing the sound that's coming out of the a speaker, especially where the magnet, you know, closes the hole a bit. So I want to open the hole up 
and I've switched my uh, trim router over to a rabbiting bit to kind of step it down and that'll open it up an extra half inch and then I'll chamfer it from there. I get the back sculpted out. I still need to do a little bit of sanding in here to smooth everything out, but it is the back, so I'm not going to go crazy with it. I also had to um, make these relief uh, cuts right here for the tweeter, the terminals on the tweeter. They wouldn't clear this hole, so I used a half inch Forstner bit, and the beauty of that kind of bit is that it will drill this kind of hole, but it will also loosen up on the drill press and maybe fall out. Then with that done, I took the drivers and I put those in place, lined them up, make sure that the holes are even, you know, side to side and up and down and all that. And then I drilled out those holes to take number six screws. So that's it for this one. In the next one, I'm going to be starting to build the base, bases for these from that piece of cherry that I planed earlier.